This short presentation will be on how we create two-dimensional maps, uh, flat maps, from the very much three-dimensional surface, uh, round surface of the Earth as we know it. It's quite a process to get to the product that you know as a map, the ones that you use when you're in a city, uh, being a tourist, uh, when you're on a walking tour, when you're driving around. Nowadays, we mostly use Google Maps, which are, for, of course, web-based, but um, we where it all comes from is really the paper map, the flat map. And how do we get there? Now, this picture that you see here is taken on one, from one of the Apollo missions, and it shows Earth as it is in space. It looks round. It looks like a ball, actually, floating in space. Now, it is very much round, but that can be a little bit deceiving. The Earth's surface is actually slightly irregular. For example, if you have a look at the picture on the left here, that is a more accurate representation of the Earth's surface. It's irregular, it's got some bumps, some elevated areas. It's actually more flattened north to south than it is east to west due to the rotation of the Earth along its axis. But it is not a true um, sphere. It's not, it's not really round. Why is this important? Well, in mapping, if you want to map your surrounding or create that abstract representation of reality that is a map, you have to be able to transform the Earth and what is on the Earth onto that map. And that is done through mathematical um, algorithms and, and quite a bit of statistics and artistry as well. So we need to know how to represent the Earth and what it, how it actually is um, in reality in the form of a mathematical construct. And this is where, if you have a look on the right, um, you'll see a couple of terms. The geoid, for example, which is a mathematical construct of the Earth using gravity as its underlying uh, concept. And then you've got the ellipsoid, which is based on the geoid and between that the sphere, which represents the Earth as we know it best, represented as an ellipsoid, which is flattened um, at the north-south extent versus the west-east extent. We'll hear a little bit more about the geoid now. This picture on the left is a representation of the gravitational anomalies that you have on the Earth's surface. And to give you a little bit more information on the geoid, now the geoid is a construct, a idealized construct, or not really idealized, a real construct of the Earth using gravity as the input. Gravity actually does change across the surface of the Earth. This is mostly due to the facts of what we, we understand in geophysics to be that the center of the Earth is not so much as a center. It's fluid and dynamic. It's not solid. So the gravitational effect on the surface of the Earth does change. So to create a geoid, you have a number of satellite platforms that constantly monitor the Earth's surface. That becomes an input to the geoid model where all the continents are removed. The world basically is represented as a water mass and gravity is constant across that surface. Now, it doesn't mean it's round. It can look like in the picture with um, things that are bulging and that are not indentations. It's just that gravity becomes constant across the surface. And this is important because that constant gravity surface where everything is equal becomes the input to the sphere. The spherical modeling of the Earth, which is of course mathematical, it's a mathematical construct where the Earth is represented as perfectly round, which is a transformation from the geoid to the sphere. Following the sphere, we have something called the ellipsoid. We know that the Earth is in fact flattened. It is not as um, wide, it's not as long as it is wide. It's longer east to west than it is um, north to south. And this is due to the spinning of the Earth along its axis um, as it spins through space. So the ellipsoid takes that into account where it isn't as perfect round objects. And this is where we now become and in, come into familiar territory where we have latitude and longitude because these are in fact based on the sphere. So why is it important to know about the geoid, the ellipsoid and the sphere? Well, the whole purpose is to understand where maps come from, the flat maps, the 2D ones. What you're looking at here is called a Lambert equal area cylindrical projection.
because underpinning all our maps and our exercises when we are mapping are what kind of projection am I using? We are all familiar with the Transverse Mercator projection that we know from school where the shapes of the countries are shown appropriately. In other words, it's an equivalent projection where the, shape, the outlines of countries are retained. This one is an equal area projection, meaning that the areas of the features that are being mapped here, the countries, are consistent. Now, the problem that we have, or why we have the ellipsoid and the sphere and the geoid, is that we need to be able to model it mathematically. Because when we go from a round item, now we're looking at the ellipsoid, and going to a flat item, a 2D one, like our map, we're going to introduce distortions. Think about peeling an orange or a nachi. You take the skin off and then try to flatten it. The only way you can flatten it is by ripping it apart in certain areas. And the same applies to maps. If we want to map the earth, we can't just take the round surface and make it flat. It doesn't work that way. So you introduce distortions and the types of projections, for example here the equal area projection, retain certain features and distort in others. So equal area means that the surface area of um, land on the map is uh, kept in place, areas are retained equal, but as a counterpoint to that is that shapes will look different and distances will be wrong and directions as well. Overlaying with a map is something called a tesor matrix, the, those little circles. And as you see, as you move away from the equator, because in this example, the equator is actually the anchoring point of the map to the, to the Earth, the original Earth, the circles um, are, not, are not distorted. And as you move away from the equator, they become increasingly more distorted. And that you can see also in the land masses. So where the circles are the most distorted, have a look at the far north, Greenland, Russia, Canada, and the far south, Antarctica. Those shapes are completely distorted. So the further you move away from the original anchoring point near the equator, you have greater distortion. And that is basically the principle of how you go from a round surface, the Earth, to a flat surface, such as the 2D map, taking into account the geoids, which is the, based on gravity across the Earth's surface, following from that the sphere, which is a perfectly round representation of the Earth, onto the ellipsoid, which is a more realistic representation of the Earth, but all mathematical constructs, of course, and now a 2D representation like this one that you see here, because we need that mathematical background to be able to, for example, retain the shape of a land surface when we are mapping it.